Welcome back to the Sex In Podcast, everyone. You are here with your hosts, Lauren and Camille. Mm-hmm. Yep. We are in a hilarious mood today. <laughs> well, we think so. Yeah, we think we're being yeah. so funny. Yeah. yeah. I was having a brutal morning. I'm in Tulum for my first morning. If you're watching the video, you would be able to know that because we're sitting next to each other. That's right. <laughs> yes. And our sound is probably the same if you're not watching the video. Yes. But if you want to listen to the video, or watch the video, I mean, you can find us on YouTube. Yeah, we upload all of our videos there. I don't know if our wolf pack knows that. Yes. And we love, I love to watch us back just to see our mannerisms, how hard we're laughing. It's fun. It's fun to watch. It's like a party. It's fun to watch our dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm back in Tulum having a morning. I'll add it in my weekly update. And we're talking about what we're going to talk about today for the audience. And we think we're just going to share some of our favorite stories. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't believe we hadn't already told you. So we're doing a casual episode. It is the holidays, Mm -hmm. and we are just feeling the ooey-gooey, fun Cozy, yeah, cozy, juicy. It feels like maybe we had some drinks, but we haven't. No. But it's that kind of energy where you're kind of buzzy and having a good time, and it makes you want to maybe have a drink. Yeah, and I think we're going to grab a mezcalita tonight. I feel like we might. I think we're going. Okay, we yeah, right. We're we going will. to. Okay. <laughs> we're doing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're going to start with our weekly updates. Yes. My update is that I'm back. You're back, baby. Yeah, I'm back in Tulum. And everything that could pretty much go wrong with my move went wrong. Okay. I'm trying to find comedy in it all. I <laughs> ended up falling in love with the last city I was in. Yes. And I do think I'll be back. Okay. I actually found a way I could rent my little cute place. I had a rooftop. Rudy and I spent every morning on the beach together. It was just very good. Yeah. You loved it. It would be the perfect place for me if the people here were there. Yeah. But it's hard because I love my friendships here. My sister is here. I don't know how much longer my sister is here. (gasps) Camille, that's my weekly update. Sorry. So I'm back in Tulum. I'll tell you just a little update about what happened with my place. Okay, since I just got there. Okay, so you got there last night, yesterday afternoon. What happened? Got there yesterday afternoon. Super cute. They hadn't set up my lock yet on my door. The keypad lock. <laughs> and I, they did have the key lock. So I was able to do that. I was able to at least get in. <laughs> okay. That's good. Very complex though. You wouldn't know how to do, how it. To do it. You have to put the key Twist it, under. then you move the doorknob up then down (laughs) you're kidding (laughs) no it's an elaborate process okay anyway we get in the place is adorable it's brand new I'm the first one who has ever lived there yeah so cute he goes the wi-fi is not working yet but it will be on tonight and if it's not tonight it will be on first thing in the morning and I'm like Okay, he was going up to an hour north of here to pay the bill because something weird was going on with transfer through the bank, blah, blah, blah. Mexico. Okay. Whatever. The Wi-Fi doesn't turn on. No. No, it doesn't. Then we go out to dinner with our friends. It's a fun little dinner. So I only spent an hour just getting my place prepared, and then we went to dinner. When I came back and was ready for a piping hot shower. You wanted it to scold you. Yeah. I needed it to take my waterproof mascara off. (laughs) If you're a woman, you get that. That, you can't just wash your eyes with cold water. Dude, to me, I can't. I can't. I mean, I have to put oil on my eyes. Yeah. And then I use soap. I do, like, washing under the water, making it really warm, and then multiple times with soap, okay? With cold water, it's just different. Please let me know, anyone, if you feel the same way. I hate washing my face with cold water. I'm just really confused about how you take off your mascara. I've never heard of this. I love doing it. You yeah. use soap only with your waterproof mascara. It's not waterproof. It's just this mascara that really sticks on. <laughs> I don't know how okay. to explain it. Okay. Sky high. Never get it. I hate it. Okay. But your lashes look great. Thank you. Yeah. It's frustrating. So turn on my shower and lo and behold, there's no hot water. None. None. Then I think, you know what? It's fine. Maybe I needed a cold rinse. 
So I do my cold rinse. I lay in my bed. It's a really comfy bed. The little pool that I have outside can't turn off the light. Crap. Crap. That's just a couple things. Figure out one of my sliding doors isn't locked. Crap. Okay. There's This is a couple things wrong already. Yes. I get up this morning, 6.30, early riser. I have an elaborate morning routine. It's two hours of very calm, peace, and quiet. It is brush my teeth, put my clothes on, take Rudy out for a little walk. That part went okay. I come back in as the sun's coming up and I meditate. There's construction next to me. And this morning, 7 a.m., they're swinging the hammer. Dang it. (laughs) Yes. They are swinging hammers and I think, hmm, construction is supposed to start till 9 but I'll just meditate on it. Let's see how deeply I can meditate on the hammering. <laughs> right. So I do that. I get excited to make my morning matcha. My stove doesn't work. Crap. This is just too much. <laughs> it's just too many things. So you're getting worked up now. I'm just getting worked up. Are you kind of going, ah? I'm kind of like, what the fuck? So I just try to put on a Spotify playlist. Well, I don't have internet, so I can't play my music. Right. It's just a fucking disaster this morning. I, Anyways, I'm like, whatever. Mexico. Go to cacao. Go to get cacao with Lauren and a whole group of friends. I get this delicious smoothie. You won't believe it. It gets knocked over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I am just having a morning from hell. That sucks. Anyways, so I go back to my apartment. The construction's so loud. Moral of the story, I'm maybe going to be moving again. Okay. I think I'm going to have to be moving again. Yeah, you're probably going to have to. Yeah, I'm the only one in the building. It's brand new. It's because the construction's right across from it. They're not prepared for a tenant right now. Right. It's obvious. Yeah, they're just not ready. They weren't ready for me. Right. So, Tulum has done me a doozy so far. Just this morning, but it's going to be okay. But you know what? I love it here. I really do. I was walking around. There are just all these cute little places. My friends are here. There's a lot going on. The place I was in was a total party town. Like, mostly people are just beach clubbing or drinking for happy hours here there's just more available yeah it's more available dance parties it's fun it's spunky you have a good time yes so that's my weekly update I'm just gonna do my morning because I think everybody had to know okay yeah everybody had to know what are what am I doing now you're doing your weekly update okay well I am in between worlds in the moment Because I do love Tulum. Also, I love being in a little cabin in the woods. And Shane and I are thinking about all of our options right now. I'm Mm -hmm. just going to put it that way. So there's that. And there's been a lot of thinking about that. Once my mind gets going into a direction of is this a possibility, then I literally will look up every single home that's for sale within a certain radius and all of the neighboring neighborhoods as well. I Mm -hmm. can't help it. I get so Susie Homemaker. It's a moving momentum. Yes. And honestly, I'm with the person that I'm wanting to be with for the rest of my life. I am 30, so I'm wanting to become... Embarazado soon, which means pregnant in Spanish. Embarazado. Wow, God. Everything just makes more sense in yeah. Spanish. Yeah. Like an embryo. Embryo. Yeah. Embarazado. Embr- yeah. Oh, God. And I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Embaraza- embarazado. Embaraz- I think that means you're pregnant. Okay. So I would like that. You know, not right now, but soon. Soon. Yeah. And so I'm just in between like being fully present and grateful for being here and also having this call to more of like rainy vibey Pacific Northwest stuff. Yeah. So we'll see. You never know with me or with Shane. We're exactly the same when it comes to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They'll be there and then they're gone. Yeah. We'll be there. It's fun. And then bye. So I don't know. Um, And then also I had – a really like intense 
nine-ish months of my life come to a close this week, Mm -hmm. I cut off some friendships that were really important to me. And also I felt like no long, I, I could not get my body to be calm. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was like, um, I just got to a point where I realized that I needed to prioritize my sanity a little bit. And I kept feeling misunderstood and like trying in all of these different ways to kind of remedy the situation. And I, felt like it was just getting kind of messier and I was getting more frustrated and it was just kind of a, it just really wasn't working. Yes. And I had to cut that off to cut it off. And like it, a tumultuous relationship a little bit. It felt, it started to feel like what am, the fuck am I doing? Like it was just too much. And this is not to say you were the victim in this scenario. No. You had totally made mistakes too. Oh, yeah. And also, it comes a point when you make a mistake with somebody and you're apologizing over and over and over where it's like that friend gets to decide to stop being your friend or just stop dragging you along. It, yeah, it just started to feel like I didn't, I I couldn't get comfortable with myself it's like no matter what I was trying to do you know apologize give space be so understanding it was just like what in the actual fuck I couldn't get it together you couldn't and so it's partially on me and I made the decision that it just was no longer feeling good in my in my body and I have absolutely no resentment I have no anger actually at all I just had to step away you had to step away completely and fully yeah which feels like a breakup it's really important to note for the wolf pack though that this stuff happens in friendships it does it happens in friendships it happens with family it happens with relationships Mm -hmm. but we've all had an experience like that where you're just feeling uncomfortable and like anything you say it just isn't meshing right. It's not yeah. feeling good in your life. You're kind of like, these friendships were really serving me and I had such a great time. And also now it just feels bad. Yeah, it was like, I, like, I wish I could describe the feeling of just wanting badly to be received and to be able to express my love for the friendships. And not feeling like what I was saying was being received how I intended it. And then I wasn't really able to receive what was coming to me the way that I'm sure they intended it. Yes. And so it was just sort of like, I can't, like, I don't, it was like I almost needed therapy with each person. You yes. know, like, it, so it was just a little bit so intense. Yeah. And that took up the majority of my week. Yeah, just sort of sitting with that and realizing the decision that I had made and ultimately feeling an enormous sense of relief in my body. I feel like I'm coming back into myself and being able to be like, okay, Lauren, you are not a shitty person. Like, you are really wonderful, like building myself back up again and really leaning on... Camille and Shane and some really amazing friendships that I have and have had for like 15 years. Yeah. You know? I want to say two things that I stand by. Number one is from the power of now, Mm -hmm. which is if you can't find presence in your current situation, make a change now. Mm. I stuck by that when I ended my relationship Mm -hmm. because I had been doing a lot of work on grounding my body and feeling what it felt like to be safe in my own body. Mm -hmm. And then when I was interacting with my partner, I didn't feel that way. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a change. And you did the same, which I feel like was really important. My second thing in the way that you made the change is that our mom always just used to tell us in high school, just disappear. Mm -hmm. Just disappear for a while. 
don't talk to people, delete your social media, mm-hmm. like go off the radar. Yeah. And everything, time heals with all wounds. Sometimes it just needs to pass over and it feels really good to just energetically and physically step away and just be like, I have to just cut it off right now and I'm feeling really good about that. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you feel, because I had a minute with myself where I'm like, have I done everything that I feel I can do? Have I had the conversations? Have I like apologized? Have I, you know, sent gifts? Like tried to make the most amends possible for something that wasn't even a, an egregious error. Like it no. was a... Not like you slept with somebody's partner, right? Or like fucking shit. I mean, it was something pretty it's a goddamn statement. small. Yes. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I want to come back from the energy that I just gave and say that in our society now, there a couple interesting things are happening where I feel like because we're so interconnected with people on social media, like for example, now if I meet somebody here and they follow me, it's like expected that I follow them back. We're expected to have these like connections forever, forever with people. And I don't feel like that feels good in my body. It was like when I was dating with people and I would go on a couple dates and you kind of follow them, right? And then you have an interaction, maybe you sleep together and then they say a couple things you don't really like. Maybe you have an awkward conversation here or there. And then in my case, blocked. I'm just done. Like I really feel like we get to take back where our energy is flowing and what energy is flowing toward us. Yeah, because it's like you're seeing people's stories 24-7. You're seeing their stories. Just, you're seeing their posts. You're seeing you're, who they're hanging out with. And they're prioritizing. seeing yours. You're seeing if they're looking at your stories, thinking if they're looking at your posts. And like mom said, it's harder to disappear these days, actually, especially if you have a podcast. They have podcasts. It's like a whole thing. And so I feel like we still have that opportunity and that option that if it feels good to make kind of a radical statement and just be like, bye, I'm disappearing in whatever way I can, that you can honor that. You can honor that. You know, I feel like people are so afraid to kind of be dramatic and it's okay if you want to be dramatic. It's okay if you want to express yourself and be like, oh shit, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Like, I I just feel like that's okay. I am not, I. I am not the kind of person I, I want to be so understanding and so empathetic and so available for my friends. And also, if, like you said, you cannot feel calm, whether it's my fault or their fault, I don't know where the la- lack of calm was coming from, but I do know that when things were cut off, my state of being has, like, drastically improved your nervous system could take a reset and maybe it has for them too you know maybe it would be good it's like you can let go of it a little bit and that might be exactly what needed to happen yeah there's this expectation of having to continue to be in each other's lives from a social perspective and I just feel like that's strange yeah I think it is too like that doesn't feel good cut it off yeah anyway I I feel like I'm proud of you no, well, I you. do because I also don't like seeing you scrambling and trying to be something you're not or have to continue apologizing for stuff that you said out of love. I don't know. I just – it didn't feel fabulous for me, so. Well, thank you. You've been so supportive, and it really rocked my world for a lot of months, so thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. There are truly an unlimited amount of ways to use Amber Bath's body butter. On your legs, in your hair, Mm -hmm. on your face. Mm -hmm. It's 70% shea butter and 30% sweet almond oil. Mm -hmm. But don't take it just from us. Mm -hmm. Listen to this review from our fabulous customer. (laughs) You know who you are. Under-the-counter use of the shower butter frappe in shower hand jobs... (laughs) 
regular soap in the shower washes away too quickly. The shower butter is thick, creamy, LOL, and smells delicious, allowing for an all-around amazing experience for both parties. <laughs> no more constantly lathering more soap to finish up the job. Just one little scoop and you're good to go. <laughs> So go to amberbath.com and use code WOLFPACK at checkout for 20% off your order of in-shower hand job moisturizer today. <laughs> All right, let's pep this up a little today. Let's pep it up. Let's pep it up because we talked about terrible mornings. We talked about friendships ending. Sad, sad, sad. Very sad. And now, if you'll allow it, Oh, okay. So we have to just <laughs> preface this with this week, for whatever reason, we were talking about, I think, some of our experiences doing sex. Yeah. Probably because I'm still H. Yeah. Camille's H. And all of a sudden, Camille's like, oh my God, do you remember when? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And I was like, wait, I, I do remember that, but can you remind me of that story? And she reminded me, and I forgot what a wild ride this story is. And then she told it to our friend group, mm -hmm. which was also a success. And we're like, okay, this is good enough for the podcast. <laughs> and then we remembered that I have a terrifying story, <laughs> kind of in a different way, but still with the genitals. Still with the genitals. And I have never told that on our podcast. And so it's story hour today. It's story hour. It's story hour. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to preface this with, my college wasn't so much of a wild ride. Right. My freshman year, I was dating my boyfriend from high school. Yeah. Then we broke up in September of our sophomore year. Okay. I started dating my college boyfriend at the end of sophomore year. So I really only had like one year, so eight months, whatever that is in a school year, to have my wild college years. Right. Okay. I'm also not one to sleep around. Okay. Yeah. You love but, people. Yes. In this story, <laughs> I was freshly out of a breakup. Right. Couple, maybe a month. How old were you? Maybe a month. I was 19. Oh, Hadn't okay. even turned 20 yet. Okay. September of my 19-year-old self, 19-year-old Cammy, <laughs> And I... Pep up for the party and think, girls, I'm going to make out with someone tonight. <laughs> okay. So I had had a guy group of friends in college and our freshman year, our sophomore year, they started their own fraternity. Okay. So they all had this house, a couple of houses right next to each other. So it was one of the Sigma Chi, I think that was it, Sig Tau, whatever, parties. Okay. So we're going to our friend's house, going to be a rager. It's a classy party, so we're dressed up. I have this, like, beautiful necklace on from my mom, and I get into the party, and I'm already a little wild. I had had some shots of vodka back at the house. Ew. So disgusting. It was Ew. probably, like, Burnett's. No. Camille. Something. She, Camille, at this point in her life, could drink a grown-ass yeah. man under the table. Yeah. It was probably a flavored Svedka, actually. Okay. Which is just... Horrifying. Was do you think it was handlefuls or was it in a shot glass? It was most likely handlefuls. Oh. <laughs> I'm literally gagging thinking about it. <laughs> okay. So I get to the party. I stand up on a chair in the kitchen and I swing my arm around looking at all the options of men. You swing it around? I swing it around. This is a real truth? This is a truth. <laughs> I'm swinging my arm around like a little pointer finger and I point to this one guy. He doesn't see me, but I'm standing next to my best friend in college and I go, him, I'm going to make out with him tonight. Whoa. That's a true part of the story. This is not something I'm embellishing on. I thought that, that was like in your head no, that you were swinging no, your no, arm around. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> and my friend's like, okay, do your thing. Was so. he cute? Yeah, he was super cute. Okay. He was cute, short, BDE. Yeah. Okay. You know. Oh, yeah, the type. Totally the type. Uh, but not the hottest in the room. Okay. Not like the one all the women are getting after, but it's kind of just like, hmm, he's like a little bit intriguing. Yeah. Okay. I like him. So I don't know him out of the frat guys. I just kind of saw him and thought, okay, cute, my type. So 
I mingle my way over. I'm doing shots. I'm having fun. And I sneak into his energetic circle. And I don't even know how. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. But all of a sudden, we're dancing. We're kissing. You know, I don't even, like, know how to do that anymore, which is funny. I'm going to... I'll figure You're it figuring out. it out. I'm, I'm yeah. going to figure it out again it's in my single years. Part. Yeah. So I have it locked in. Okay. And then this ends up going a little further than making out. It goes to sex. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided I would make out with him and then he was inside of me. <laughs> then he entered me. <laughs> it goes to sex. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we end up having sex. I was hammered verge of blackout I'm sure brown Gosh. out you know it, but in a fun college way I'm just having fun it's okay, like a big yeah. frat party whatever so we have sex and he lived in the house he lived that's in why the house. it was so accessible yes because I had driven my car over I had my cute little jeep and I parked it at the house because it was my friend's house so right. I was probably gonna stay there anyways just on the couch or whatever yeah in one of my friend's rooms whatever so I am butt naked in this person's bed in the morning and I all of a sudden hear the sun wasn't even out yet maybe just hitting the horizon like 5 30 okay it's a beautiful sunrise it's a beautiful sunrise <laughs> it's one for the books <laughs> and I hear this banging downstairs we're in upstairs and I'm like kind of jostled awake you know but like so drunk still and I'm like what is going on I all of a sudden he flings the co covers off himself and books it downstairs I hear him making a lot of effort to get downstairs and then I hear thumping and then I start hearing screaming of a woman's voice and then I hear no 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 <laughs> and all of a sudden Breaking through the door comes a woman with the look of the devil in her <laughs> eyes. Oh my she God. She rips the covers off me and goes, who the fuck is she? I go, who are you? I am just trying to sleep. And she goes, I'm his girlfriend. No. Oh, And shit. I'm like, oh my God. And I go, well, this is really embarrassing for you to the guy. And I'm like. Honestly, I had no idea. He never mentioned he had a girlfriend. I wouldn't have slept with him if I knew that. And I... You're butt naked. I'm butt naked. I'm like, well, she's like, get the fuck out. And I'm like, tr is trying to beat me up. He's pull holding her back. I'm like, I all I need is my clothing and I'm gone. Trust me, I'm gone. So I am frantic, oh. drunk, you know, I am so around, pissed. Whatever. I'm so pissed. She throws my underwear at me, throws my little romper on. I'm like, have my romper on. And I start walking away from the room and I close the door and I'm like, oh my God, my mom's necklace. No. This beautiful necklace. So I'm like, I'm not going back in there. So I go and wake up one of our other friends <sighs> and I'm like, something's gone wrong. And he's like, wakes up and he just goes, oh no. And I go, <laughs> some woman just came in and he just goes it's heather it's crazy heather i can't believe we're using the names i have to use the name it's crazy heather no, it's crazy heather oh my and he God. goes they're not dating this has happened before and i'm like it's oh his it's his ex and i'm like oh my god and i'm like well i need my necklace so badly I can't leave it. I could just, I was, you know, when you start having those funny visions and I'm seeing her like smashing my necklace with a you hammer. Know, with a hammer. Yes. yes. So I'm like, I just have to get out of here. So we go in there. There's more yelling. It's a dirty, it's a bad scene in there. <laughs> bad. With him and her. It's there just may a have bad been. scene. Well, it's just a bad scene. Okay. Things weren't, were escalating, if anything. <laughs> God. On her end. So I frantically find Ugh. the necklace, get my little Jeep and go home. So I go back to sleep. A couple hours later, I wake up and I like text. I can't remember if I texted my friend or the guy I had slept with and said like, hey, what happened there? <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? And they said, I shit you not. She had been arrested and put into jail because she then ran downstairs and tried to jump in front of a car. <laughs>
Yes. And like to end it all? Yes. Then I had not... I was then told that this was not the first time it happened. One time she walked around with a megaphone outside <laughs> saying that he was a cheater, 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 had been arrested. So this was a, a few different times. Oh my God. And then she yeah. stalked you for a while. Then it got a little nasty. Yeah. She stalked me. She not, well, she started Instagram account. Well, it started with her Instagram account following me and then commenting on all my pictures that I was fat and ugly. Oh God. Oh God. Then it was her creating fake accounts. Then it was her best friends. So I was having to do blocking on so many people over and over, which was really wrong. It was really wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. The coolest part about this story, though, how it comes to a close, is that I ended up meeting my college boyfriend in this way because I was at what they call the creek one morning, and there was one side where all the people were on, then you had to cross the creek to get to this other part, and I went over to hang out with the frat guys. So I went over, cross over with the friends. He was in the group. So was my soon-to-be boyfriend, little did I know. And the girl, I saw her across the other side of the river. When she saw me, she put her shoes on. Her sneakers. Her sneakers. And she paced along the riverbank, pointing at me, calling no. me fat. Yes. Saying that she was going to get me. She was going to get she you. She was going to get me. And I ended up kind of clinging on to this one friend of the group saying, oh my God. And he's like, oh yeah, she's nuts. And then we kind of ended up joking about it. And then I would see him at parties and we would kind of talk about it and be like, this is just so weird and sad. And then I ended up falling in love with his friend. Wow. Yeah. And dated him for, man, three and a half years. Yes. (laughs) So it all went well. But that was by far the most wild sex experience I've ever had. It just never ended, it feels like. Never ended. And she was also really buff, but tiny. So it was really scary for you. Buff, but tiny. Uh, If for some reason she's hearing this. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Never call a lady fat. Yeah. Ever again. Totally hurt my confidence. (laughs) (laughs) Never came back from that. A lot of therapy. A lot of therapy and body dysmorphia. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. Rude. So I bounced back. Anyway, he ended up transferring back to his hometown for the next two years of school. And so did she. And they actually ended up getting back together and dating for years to come. Didn't get married. Didn't get married. Aren't Not together. that I, I don't know. Well, yeah, we don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Gosh. So. That's your story. That's my story. So my craziest sex story doesn't even involve like the best sex of my life. It was just like whatever, probably kind of, you know, really drunk sex that was pretty good, I guess. <laughs> and then <laughs> a beat up potential explosion. <laughs> that is so scary. When someone has that much passion passion that they want to let go on I mean if you reverse this story and it's you know a man a a man breaking into his ex-girlfriend's house abusive oh it's so scary I mean this is abusive she was abusive abusive. it's abusive yeah it's terrible it's It's just crazy that you were on the other that you were on that end of it you know I was on that end of it I can't believe it Yep. Okay. And that's that on that. Passion will get you. Yeah, I can see how people create crimes in a heat of passion. Well, because the thing is that, a uh, detail that we forgot is that, that she lived next door. Oh my God. So yes. she saw your car. She saw my car and she knew it was him because he was the one probably hooking up with the chicks out of, the, out of that house. Gosh, she had a lot of guts. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised. No wonder he had to transfer home. He either pretty much had to commit to her, like he'd never really have a successful. Gosh, partnership. he was in a really. I hope he's okay. Me too, because that is a tough one. That's tough. Okay, shout out. You know who you are. I'm not going to say the guy's name. You already did. I did. Maybe we'll beep it out. Okay. You said it. I did. Yep. You did. Starts with a B. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So next. Wow. Yep. Yowzer. Yeah. And next we have another genital story. Unfortunately, not pleasant either. <laughs> yeah, not pleasant either. Dang, and you know what? I was the same age. Take it away, kid. Surprisingly. Okay. You were 19? Yep. We've had funny synchronicities in age and like funny weird things that have happened. Oh yeah, always. Yeah. Uh okay. So I got to college. I was a freshman in college and I did the classic college experience. I lived in a dorm with my roommate, Jamie, this other chick lived across the hall. Her name was Alexa and we formed a triad pretty immediately. We loved each other. It was so fun. Jamie was from New Jersey, still is from New Jersey. Yeah. Shout out Jamie for listening. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, we just had a good old time. Well, here, the thing is, is that Alexa was single and Jamie and I both had long distance boyfriends. Mm-hmm. Her boyfriend was back in New Jersey and my boyfriend, for whatever reason, we were broken up. And then right when I got to college, I was like, I want to get back together. Even course, though it's scary. I was too scared. And yeah. I was like, I don't want to be single as a freshman. I just can't do it. Yeah. I want to be focused. So I was like, let's get back together, knowing that, guess what? He was deploying to Afghanistan as a private contractor. I forgot that you guys broke up and got back together. Yes, like right, literally the first week of college, I remember calling him for no reason and just being like, I want to get back together. It's like I was too scared to be vulnerable. I couldn't be single. Single. No. No. So I, at this point, was 18, turned 19. I was always the oldest in my class. Mm -hmm. turn 19 in October or one of the oldest you know and we're getting pretty bored around the holidays Mm -hmm. Jamie and I because we're Jamie and me I Jamie and I Jamie and I were getting a little bit bored because her boyfriend was back in New Jersey and he was still in high school he was like 10 years younger than my boyfriend whatever (laughs) I'm getting to the point of the story and my boyfriend was in Afghanistan so I'm like able to talk to him at like 8 o'clock p.m. every day he was a contractor he wasn't enlisted so it was kind of different we could talk and so anyway one day we were high as shit on bang bars when (laughs) used to Lauren used to eat pot edibles (laughs) so often it would be exciting. We would get higher than a goddamn kite and laugh and eat. Jamie's grandma would send oh my these God, huge those boxes. She would send these huge boxes of delicious baked goods for us, like cookies, and they would still be soft. She would overnight them. So oh it would be God. like cookies, chips, candy. And I remember she would have it in the closet. Yes. And she'd pull it down, and it was just like heaven. It was literally heaven. And we would just get high, laugh until we would almost shit ourselves and then just eat all of this food and wake up the next morning and be like, we're never doing that again. What are those things? Because bang bars were new. These powerful um, chocolate bars. Chocolate bars. It was like right when dispensaries were coming out. Totally. Like in 2011. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it was like when all of that stuff was hitting the market. Totally. Anyway. Yeah. Wasn't your boyfriend's brownie bars anymore. It was these crazy bang bars. It was bars. really intense. Yeah, you could eat like a fourth of a square of one and you would just be gonzo forever. So anyway, we were high as shit and Jamie's like, you should get your hood pierced. And I'm like, what is that? I didn't even know what it was. Yeah. And she's like, there's this skin above your clit and you can get it pierced. You should do it. You should do it. You should do it. <laughs> and I was just like, what? <laughs> like, are you serious? I'm assuming that's how I sound. And I'm like, like I am gonna do it. <laughs> I was like, I'll do it if you do it. And then I was like, I'll do it if you and Alexa do it with me. And they're like, okay, yeah. And I'm like, what? Holy shit. You're like, oh, agree. And committed. so we were all just like, okay, we're gonna go do this. We're just gonna go do it. So oh, we found a good God. piercing studio. And the next day, when we were no longer high, or whatever. Still committed. We still committed and decided to do it. So all three of us, th- there's just something about the adrenaline of it. Like oh, anytime you're thing. doing like a new piercing, a new tattoo, there's just something really specific about that feeling. Oh, and nothing more terrifying and just wild than getting your clip pierced, basically. Oh, yeah. The hood of your clip. I didn't even know what that was, but I was already obsessed with sex and vaginas. Yeah. I was going to be in the vagina monologues already. That's like right. I just loved this kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm like, of course I'll do it. You know, yeah. I'm doing it. 
So we go and I go first because I knew if I saw them. No way. That there's do it after. no way I could do no. it. Like I, if one of them screamed or, you know, uh-uh. shit's Magoo, I don't know. Just no. So I went first and I handled pain quietly and in a fainting kind of way. So I almost fainted. I feel like funny that that's your pain style. I'm so quiet. Yeah. And then I just go bye bye. <laughs> so you just slither down onto the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I'm in pain or I'm pissed, I'm really quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so we get him pierced. Yes. Which in and of itself is a fabulous story. It's just crazy. But, but that's where it begins. That's where it begins. <laughs> so then over the next couple of months. My boyfriend came back, thought to witness the piercing. Good. Honestly, having it, I thought it would be kind of cool, like you would feel it more often, but it's a piece of metal down by your clit. I mean, it's like you're kind of thinking about it all the time. It makes you a little bit, it does make you a little hornier because you're just aware of your pussy more and stuff. Wow. But when you're having sex, you know, imagine you're when you push your clit up into their mound or whatever to get... It Ow! Wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. Okay, to me that just made me want to cringe. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> okay, well, oh, no. it, it wouldn't hurt. Um, okay. But it was just, I was thinking about it I feel like you're having to be a little bit more careful. You're not yeah, like you're having just... rough sex, rubbing. I feel like it could get going yanked. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so he comes home for leave, goes back. And when he goes away, I was on a Christmas vacation at dad's house and was like, I'm going to get a Brazilian wax before he comes back home for his next leave experience. Yes. So Camille and I go to a Brazilian wax boutique, not a cheap one, a good one. A good one. You did your research. Of course I did. It's my pussy. Yeah. So I go in and I'm like, okay, great. It's my first wax since my piercing. You know, it's been a couple of months. Camille's waiting in the waiting room. And I'm just talking with my little friend from Brazil. She's doing my wax, doing my wax. She mentions my piercing. I'm like, yep, that's my piercing. And it was the kind of wax where it wasn't with the paper strips. It's the kind of wax that they apply and then the wax hardens and they pull the wax off. So it's like a translucent green. green yeah. I'll never forget it. A translucent oh, yeah. green color. Well, all of a sudden we're just having good conversation and whoosh, <laughs> and I, I, she gasps and I go, what? Oh my God. And I look over to the wax strip and it literally, it's like a movie in my head. The light was shining through the wax strip and I just saw the piercing stuck in the wax. (laughs) And I was just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And she starts pacing. She's like, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Like she's, you know, saying that she's so sorry. And I'm just like, what does it look like? Am I, you know, is it bloody? Is it bloody? Like, what has happened here? And sure as shit, she waxed that piercing clean off. Oh. Clean off. Out. Out. My God. I don't even oh know. Oh, my God. What in the fuck? It was seriously so crazy. So, in those oh moments. Oh, my God. Just imagine what I had said before. Silence and then near fainting. So, I was laying there on my back, fully exposed. Ghost white. Ghost white. Half of my pussy completely waxed now. And also I'm just like, and, and the other half is a bush, you know, like you. <laughs> so it's like it's half, half is waxed. Wax. So yes. It's not like it was her last wax no. trip. It was like the last no. of the first half. Yeah, it was on the right side. Yes. Yeah. And like, I was just thinking, I don't have a complicated experience down there. Like, it's really clear. It's really obvious that it's right that it's there. Right it's there. not like it was hidden. No, in some there wasn't a, cra- you know, situation. crevice or a cavern. It was right there. So clear as day. And she must have just been carried away in conversation with me and just... I mean, applied it over the piercing and then just hi ho Cheerio, it's gone. Oh so my she, god. Yes. So she immediately is, you know, we're doing some rubbing alcohol on there. I get a mirror, I check it out. I'm I'm just sweating and also white and also just not knowing what to do. 
Now, also, it was only on a small piece of skin, so it wasn't... Right. Okay, so let me explain. If you're not already so woozy, when you get a piercing, like if you imagine your belly button piercing, okay? Imagine a belly button piercing. It's just like that, pretty much. Not as thick, obviously. Yeah. But what happened was the top... (laughs) The whole thing, it didn't rip the skin out. Oh. The, The barbell just slipped down and through. Kill me. So it blew just the bottom me. out. Just kill me. Just kill me. <laughs> okay. So it wasn't actually that. It was obvious. Yeah. Like, like it was actually so, because obviously I had to, well, we had to look at it. Story. Yeah. So anyway, story. anyway, so I'm laying there and we just kind of get through the horror of it together. Me and I don't know, Victoria, we'll call her Victoria. We'll call her Victoria. We got through the experience together. And then I'm just looking down at my half bush, half, you know, naked mole rat. And I'm like, just finish her up, finish the job. I mean, what can you do? I wasn't going to shave the other half. No, you've kind of just, you've committed. So then it took forever. She was shaking. She was nervous, you know, because of everything. She was probably everything. worried there was another one. Yeah, she was probably just, I don't know. But I just remember laying there like, I can't believe this just happened. This is such a crazy story. Because it's not like you're ever going to get that pierced again. I'm sorry. No. That's a one-time show. No, you're never doing you're it again. You're never doing it again. Oh, no, sorry. you're never doing it again. Crazy. So it was literally <laughs> horrifying. So anyway, um, I f- she finishes up the job, but crack smooth as a baby. Yeah. I go to the front desk. I'm sure I'm still white. Everybody's kind of quiet out there. Because it was like, the kind of... Are you okay? You know the kind of waxing studio where, like, the 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 walls don't come all the way to the ceiling. So there is space over. You can hear right. it. It's like a doctor's office that, like, a curtain is separating Pretty it. much. You Pretty can much. hear everything. Pretty much. It was just me in the waiting room. Yeah. So I came uh, out. I paid. She paid. And she tipped. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then we I walked out. I was in a very exciting yeah. state of my people pleasing days. Yes. So we walked out to the uh what is that called? Parking lot. Well, we're walking out to the parking lot and I go, "Did she just rip out your ring?" And Lauren's like, "Yeah, I'm really scared." And I'm like, "Go the fuck back in there. You get your money back. You get your tip back." I'm like, "You could sue those people." I was yes. like so pissed. I'm like, you are getting free waxes for the rest of your life. You think you're paying for that experience? Yes. That was horrifying. Yes. I heard the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Tell your side. I heard the whole thing. I'm sitting out in the waiting room going through like a magazine or my phone or right. whatever. And all of a sudden, it's like me and the receptionist. And I just hear, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, oh, no. And I like stand up and I'm like, oh, Lauren? And I'm like, what? I look at the receptionist and I'm like, what's going on? And she goes, does your sister have a piercing? And I go, yes. And she goes, I think that's what happened. I'm like, uh, I don't know what that means. And I'm so scared. And then it just goes quiet. And I'm like, okay, I'll just be waiting out here, I guess. I was probably waiting for like 15 minutes. <laughs> At least. At least. Because it, I'm telling you, the rest of the wax At least when Lauren came forever. out, she was a ghost. She was a ghost. And I'm like, oh my God, like thinking of having to like carry her. <laughs> I didn't even have my license yet, right? Like just yeah. got my license. And Lauren's like, you have to drive home. You have to drive home. And I'm like, oh my God, you need to call. You need an ambulance. Like, it was just so scary. I ended up calling our dad because I was just like, He's the person I know with the most medical experience. Oh my god! And we were with him, oh and I'm just dad. like, I was just like, Dad, I, I had a piercing, and it came out during my wax. And he's just like, Oh my god! Oh my god! He's sweet. like, Go get some Neosporin. Yeah, he's like, you, god damn it! <laughs> I can't like, believe you do that to yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just yeah, like, I literally stop at Walgreens. We got home. We observed the situation. It wasn't, I was so scared of what I was going to see. <sighs> and luckily it was, it looked like a tiny little cut on all. Yeah. It was just a tiny cut. Healed up so quickly. Yes. God, the vagina is amazing. Yes, it really is. I still own that ring. That you kept it as a of memoir. Of course I kept it as a memory. And did you keep the, it on the wax? <laughs> no. 
too. That would have been so funny. I don't funny. even remember how I collected the piercing. You're I mean, probably I probably just like, plucked I? it. I probably <laughs> plucked it out of the wax. And you know how when, <laughs> you know how when the green wax that's like that translucent, you can see all of the bulbs of, of the top course. of your hair because it pulls them out. So off. I know of the roots. So it was like all these jungle hairs because I have black pubes, jungle <laughs> hair, <laughs> jungle so hairs, and my just pubes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Still gets I'm me. You talking about it. <laughs> so anyway, oh my god, yeah. you guys. Okay, yeah. I Today really took it like an emergency. <laughs> yeah. Anything like that, I take as an emergency. I remember getting my oh IUD my and just making it the biggest ordeal. I know. My mom. We have to tell the IUD. And maybe a nipple piercing story on the next yes. podcast. Yeah, we're going to hit you with a couple stories because we... I think it's really fun to talk about. Yeah. Get to know us more, our horrifying experiences. Gosh. Well, we hope we could light you up today. Yeah. We hope you're just lit <laughs> right up. Laugh. Yeah. Get a little laugh. Don't take it so seriously. You know, yeah. it's going to be okay. It's so fun. So if you're wanting extra content, make sure to go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash the sex end. We just released part eight bonus Q and a, we announced our third winner of our raffle. They win every month. We do a raffle with all of our members. One person gets a two on one session with us for an hour where we can talk about anything. Both of our sessions have been totally different and I'm so excited for the third one. Yep. So if you want to sneak into next month's raffle, Again, patreon.com slash the sexton to join our VIP community. We love it. Thank you for being here with us every week. You are just so important to us. Camille and I love being here with you. And we thank you. We'll see you next week.